What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create this split navigation setup using code and CSS that I've written. Link is in the description below this video. And I'm gonna go over the whole setup process to show you how to customize the CSS to work on your site. So I'm here on this 7.1 site. I've pasted the code into the site-wide footer code injection by going to settings, advanced, and then code injection and pasting it into the footer. And then for the CSS from the home panel, I went to design, custom CSS, and paste in the split navigation CSS. So now to sort of set it up even further, we have to edit the header. So edit the site header. And for the uh, header layout, we're going to select the bottom one. So it's this kind of centered logo one with a navigation below. So as soon as we click that, the navigation is going to disappear and that's okay. Once you hit save, then we'll see the navigation appear once again. Okay, so the way that we can customize this CSS, we have three variables here, which I'll talk about first. Now, because I only have six links here, um, this first one is the split after item. So right now I'm splitting it after the third navigation item. And so that splits it perfectly, but you can change this. Like you might have more items than this. Let's say you have eight. So you might want to split it after the fourth one. And so then you would have, you know, four on the first side and however many are left on the other side. So you can change this number um, depending on how many items you want to have on the first side compared to the second side. So for me, since I have six items, I'm gonna leave it at three. The next one is the action size. So this is basically the size of the container over here. So right now I have it set to 250 pixels and basically you just need to change this to make sure that the area is big enough for any action icons. So that includes, you know, uh, social media icons, the cart, a button. It definitely, this effect works better without these things because there's more room for links to kind of live in this center area. So the less things you have on the side, the more room you have for your links. But if you do want to include them, you're going to have to update this action size. So like if you have it much smaller, then, you know, you might find that some of your items are getting cut off. For example, if it's only 50 pixels, you won't even see the button. Um, so you'll have to play around with this for your site. Now, if you're not going to include the action um, items, like let's say you only have the cart in the header, for example. So I'll go to elements and I'll toggle off the button and I'll toggle off the social links. So let's say we only have the cart over here. We don't need this whole area to be 350 pixels. If you just have the cart, you could just have this be 50 pixels. Uh, and because this container doesn't need to be very big and that gives more room for the links to live up here. So again, this is the action size and it's basically just the size of the container for any you know other items over here. And then finally we have the logo spacing. So this is just the space between the links and the logo. So this is in viewport width units. So basically 3% of the width of the screen. So I find, you know, three works well or two works well, um, one of those values, but you can customize it as you want. Now, let's say you have a lot of links in your navigation. Eventually they're going to start wrapping. So let me bring back my, my button and my social icons because it helps to illustrate the wrapping. So I'm gonna to toggle on my button and my social links. And then I'll change this back to like 350 pixels. And you can see, actually, I'm going to go 250. So right now on wider desktop screens, there's enough room for these uh, links to live next to each other. But as soon as I start shrinking down the screen, you're going to find that, you know, there isn't enough room for the links to be on one row and they might start wrapping like this. So uh, you probably don't want them to start wrapping like that. So what I did is I added a media query um, and this will basically just kind of remove the split styling and allow these links to wrap under the logo or the site title. So let's say, you know, at like a screen width of 
And actually, I'm not even gonna guess. I'm going to show you how you can find the exact window width at which you want to wrap your links. And this is gonna depend on your website. So if you right click and click inspect, we don't even have to worry about the Chrome inspect tools. We just want this window open. So I'm gonna minimize it. And now as I move the screen width, you can see the width of the window and the height are displayed in the upper right hand corner. So we can see the window width at which we want our navigation to wrap like this. So we would want it at a bigger window width than 1200. So basically before these items wrap, so it looks like 1200 and maybe like 35 pixels. So I'm looking here in the upper right hand corner. That would be a good time for these to wrap and that will ensure that, you know, I don't get any stacking like this. So I'm going to do 1235 And now we shouldn't get the wrapping anymore. As soon as it starts to get too small for them all to be on a single line, I can just move them down below. Perfect. So that's what the media query is there for. Um, it's to trigger when the screen size at which the links can no longer fit on the same line as the logo and need to wrap down below. Now you'll notice one thing that I've done for these links is you can see they get bigger on bigger screen sizes. And then the font size of the links gets a little bit smaller on smaller screen sizes. And if the font was just staying big as it was originally, then there wouldn't be like these links would be much bigger and they wouldn't be able to stay on the same line for as long as they do. So the way that I set that up is with a variable font size technique. So I'm using the clamp property here. And clamp takes a minimum value. So I'm not ever allowing these links to get smaller than eight pixels. And it also takes a maximum value. So I'm never allowing the links to get bigger than 18 pixels. So on bigger screen sizes, the upper limit is 18 pixels. And on the in-between size, so this is like the, the true size or the ideal size of these links. What I did is I used 0.6% of the viewport width and then I'm adding five pixels to that. So uh, this just says, you know, because I'm using a percentage of the width of the screen to calculate the font size, that means at a smaller window size, the font gets smaller, at a bigger window size, the font gets bigger. So that's how you can create a little bit of like a variable font size there. So you might wanna play around with that a little bit. Um, you know, maybe you want it to get even smaller on smaller screen sizes. So maybe you wanna go like 0.5, and so that'll not let it get uh, so big on bigger screen sizes, but it'll allow it to get a little bit smaller on smaller screen sizes. So you can play around with the variable font size here and just kind of like customize that to your needs. You know, maybe you want it to be like plus two pixels, which will make it really small. Um, so again, you can just kind of play with these values a little bit and uh, customize it to the needs of your site. Uh, and yeah, so that's all the customization here. Um, one thing that I do recommend, especially if you have a lot of links, so let me go to the navigation and I'll just add, you know, some demo links. So now you can see we have way more links here. So we definitely, you know, need to kind of like rearrange things a little bit. So we have one, two, three on this side and one, two, three, four, five, six on that side. So I need to go back to the custom CSS window and I'm gonna change the split after items to four because I want four on each side. And now because I have m many more links, it's getting a little bit crowded up here in the navigation, like particularly as the screen gets smaller, like on someone's laptop view, you know, we don't really want it to look like this. So that's why I kind of recommend keeping the button and the social icons out of the header. Um, because that'll allow you to set the action container size to be smaller. So I'll hide the button and hide the social links. You know, if you have a cart, that, that's fine because it doesn't take so much room in the header. So I'll change this to 50 pixels. And now because we do have a lot of links, but the action size is smaller, you'll see that those links, you know, they don't, they're not forced to wrap because they have so much more room they have 200 extra pixels to live here because we didn't need to make room for the social icons and the button. So um, hopefully that's clear in terms of how to update the variables, 
how to change the media query depending on when you want the nav to wrap. Like in this example too, because the links have more room to live on the same line, they don't really necessarily need to wrap at this point. We could probably go even smaller than that. So like, for example, I could do like 1000, maybe like 160 pixels. And we'll see if, if that works. As I shrink the screen. Yeah, so they're not even coming close to wrapping. I might even go 1100. So again, you can just kind of play around with the settings, see what works for your website. Um, I'll set it to something really low and then I'll, I'll figure out when it wraps. So like I'll set it to like 900 pixels uh, and then we'll figure out when it starts wrapping and then I can use the technique. Wow, okay, 900 actually works perfectly, okay. So I was gonna say like one way to test the value um, is to make this a really small number. So like I can say, okay, I'll set it to 100 and then that means it the window would get like really tiny before it ever wrapped. Wow, this is cool, okay. So this one doesn't even need to wrap. So if your links are able to stay on the same line uh, as the screen gets smaller and you don't need them to wrap, again, like I just did, you can set the media query to something tiny, like 100 pixels, and then um, they won't even end up wrapping below the logo. They'll just stay on the same line. And again, you can see it's the variable font size that is kind of saving the day here and allowing them to get so much smaller on the smaller screen sizes. So a pretty cool effect there. Then you might be wondering how it looks on mobile. Well, it's just going to be your normal mobile view with all of your links uh, on, on in the mobile menu. So that's how you create and customize this navigation layout. If you found this video helpful and you want to see more Squarespace content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.